In this video, I will review Chapter 12, Public Relations. Public relations has the ability to change perception. For example, in 1956, the nation's top blue jeans manufacturers formed the National Denim Council to put school children back in blue jeans through a concerted national public relations, advertising, and promotional effort. And it worked. Public relations refers to the total communication strategy conducted by a person, a government, or an organization attempting to reach and persuade an audience to adopt a point of view. So what is the difference between public relations and advertising? Advertising is controlled publicity that a company or an individual buys. Public relations attempts to secure favorable media publicity, which is more difficult to control, to promote a company or a client. Early press agents were those who sought to advance a client's image through media exposure, primarily via stunts staged for newspapers. Press agents shaped many of the legends about rugged American individualism and frontier expansion that were later adopted by books, movies, etc. about the American West. Individuals such as Daniel Boone, who engineered various land grabs and real estate ventures, and Davy Crockett, who was involved in the massacre of Native Americans, employed press agents to repair their images. The most notorious press agent of the 19th century was P.T. Barnum, who used gross exaggeration, fraudulent stories, and staged events to secure newspaper coverage for his clients, his American Museum, and later his circus. Buffalo Bill Cody promoted himself and his traveling show. He hired press agents who used a wide variety of media channels, which shaped many lasting myths about rugged American individuals. He was among the first to use publicity. Press agents in the 1800s understood that utilizing the press brought with it enormous power to sway the public and to generate business. The railroads began to use press agents to help them obtain federal funds. Their first strategy was simply to buy favorable news stories about rail travel from newspapers through direct bribes. They also gave reporters free train tickets so that they would write positive stories about rail travel. Utility companies such as Chicago Edison and AT&T used PR strategies to derail competition and attain monopoly status. By the beginning of the 20th century, reporters and muckrakers were investigating the promotional practices behind many companies. As informed citizenry paid more attention, it became more difficult for larger firms to fool the press and mislead the public. By the early 1900s, executives had realized that their companies could sell more products if they were associated with positive public images and values. Ivy Ledbetter Lee is considered one of the founders of modern public relations. He understood the public's attitude toward big corporations had changed. He counseled his clients that honesty and directness were better PR devices than the deceptive practices of the 1800s. After a railroad accident, Lee advised them to admit the mistake, vow to do better, and let newspapers in on the story. Edward Bernays was the first person to apply the findings of psychology and sociology to public relations. He was the nephew of Sigmund Freud. During World War I, Bernays developed propaganda that supported America's entry in that conflict and was promoting the image of President Woodrow Wilson as a peacemaker. His wife, Doris Fleischman, was one of the first women in the industry and paved the way for others so that now women outnumber men in PR by three to one. There are more than 7,000 PR firms in the United States. It has been a growing academic field since the 1980s. In 2011, the Public Relations Society of America, the PRSA, had more than 10,000 members and 322 chapters at colleges and universities. The PR industry uses two approaches. There are independent PR agencies whose sole job is to provide clients with PR services and 
Most companies, which may or may not hire independent PR firms, maintain their own in-house PR staffs to handle routine tasks such as writing press releases, managing media requests, staging special events, and dealing with internal and external publicity. Public relations, like advertising, pays careful attention to the needs of its clients and to the perspectives of its targeted audiences. PR involves providing a multitude of services, including publicity, communication, public affairs, issues management, government relations, financial PR, community relations, industry relations, advertising, social networking, and propaganda. In addition, PR personnel produce employee newsletters, manage client trade shows and conferences, conduct historical tours, appear on news programs, and organize damage control. One of the most essential practices in the PR profession is doing research. Just like advertising, PR research is driven by demographic and psychographic research. PR practitioners rely on mail, Google Analytics, and Twitter Analytics to get a fix on an audience's perception of an issue, a policy, a program, or a client's image. Press releases, also known as news releases, are announcements written in the style of news reports that give new information about an individual, a company, or an organization and pitch a story idea to the news media. Through press releases, PR firms manage the flow of information. Video news releases, also known as VNRs, mimic the style of broadcast news, but are rarely used by actual news outlets. They are 30 to 90 second visual press releases. Public service announcements, called PSAs, are 15 to 60 second audio or video reports that promote nonprofit government programs, educational projects, volunteer agencies, or social reform. Media relations promote a client by securing publicity or favorable coverage in the news media. They also perform damage control or crisis management when negative publicity occurs. Media relations professionals also recommend advertising to their clients when it seems appropriate. Special events raise the profile of corporate, organizational, or government clients, such as Milwaukee's Summerfest. A corporate sponsor can also align itself with a cause or an organization that has positive status among the general public, such as John Hancock sponsoring the Boston Marathon. Pseudo-events are created for the sole purpose of gaining coverage in the media. These include press conferences, talk show appearances, or any other staged activity. Another responsibility of PR is to sustain goodwill between an agency's clients and the public. PR firms encourage companies to participate in community activities, such as hosting tours and open houses, making charitable donations, and participating in town events like parades and festivals. Government relations and lobbying maintaining connections with government agencies that have some say in how companies operate in a community, state, or nation is definitely a priority. Lobbying is the process of attempting to influence lawmakers to support and vote for an organization or industry's best interests. Lobbying can lead to ethical problems. Anyone who criticizes tobacco, alcohol, processed food, fatty food, soda pop, pharmaceuticals, animal testing, overfishing, or pesticides is likely to come under attack from the Center for Consumer Freedom. AstroTurf lobbying is a phony grassroots public affairs campaign engineered by public relations firms. A company or organization's website has become the home base of public relations efforts. PR professionals also connect with the public through social media. Some PR firms have edited Wikipedia pages in order to paint their clients in a better light. A growing number of companies also compensate bloggers to subtly promote their products, especially mom bloggers who talk about household products. 
One important duty of PR has been helping a corporation handle a public crisis or a tragedy, especially if the public assumes the company is at fault. PR and journalism have always had a love-hate relationship. In 1932, Stanley Walker, a news editor, identified PR agents as mass-minded molders, fronts, mouthpieces, chiselers, moochers, and special assistants to the president. Much of the antagonism is directed at PR professionals from journalists. Journalists perceive PR people as pseudo-professionals created to distort the facts that reporters work hard to gather. PR firms often raid the ranks of reporters for new talent. PR needs journalists for publicity, and journalism needs PR for story ideas and access. PR firms have enabled journalists to become lazy. Journalism's most prevalent criticism of public relations is that it works to counter the truths reporters seek to bring to the public. Modern PR redefined and complicated the notion of what facts are. Most journalists have also objected that PR professionals block access to key business leaders, political figures, and other newsworthy people. PR agents are now able to manipulate reporters by giving exclusives to journalists who are likely to cast a story in a favorable light or cutting out a journalist entirely if they've been critical in the past. PR agents help companies promote as news what otherwise would have been purchased in advertising. If PR can secure news publicity for clients, the added credibility of a journalistic context gives clients a status that the purchase of advertising cannot offer. Dealing with both a tainted past and journalism's hostility has often preoccupied the public relations profession, leading to the development of several image-enhancing strategies. The PRSA has a code of ethics and monitors PR practices. And what about alternative voices? The practices of PR often remain invisible to the public and are rarely the subject of media reports or investigations. The Center for Media and Democracy is concerned about the invisibility of PR practices and has sought to expose the hidden activities of large PR firms since 1993. The term flack refers to a PR agent. It derived from the military word flack, as in flak jacket, meaning an anti-aircraft artillery shell symbolized for journalists the protective barrier that PR agents insert between their clients and the press. From the days of PR's origins in the early 20th century, many people have been skeptical of communications originating from public relations professionals. However, PR's most significant impact may be on the political process, especially when organizations hire spin doctors to favorably shape or reshape a candidate's image. Though public relations often provides political information and story ideas, the PR profession bears only part of the responsibility for spun news. Well, that is a quick review of Chapter 12. I have listed this chapter's key terms in the last slide of this video. Feel free to pause the video to read and understand these key terms. And once you've finished this video, don't forget... This review of Chapter 12 does not cover the entire chapter. Read Chapter 12 in your textbook, do the Chapter 12 blog assignment on the discussion board, review the Chapter 12 study guide to prepare you for your next quiz. Now, here's a look at the key terms. You can find the definitions for these terms in the back of the Chapter 12.